Welcome back to the podcast. Today we have Cam Pecky, a professional Valorant player for Sentinels, and I'm so excited to talk to you. How are you doing today? I'm um, doing good. Doing very good. I love it. I love it. I before to give some context before this podcast, you you said you that your cat was sleeping on you. I thought that was the funniest thing. <laughs> that that's what we were waiting for. I was I was pretty at least it was the cat. I was pretty happy that it, mm -hmm. for, that was the reason. Um, yeah, I, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say my my cats keep me hostage, hostage <laughs> all the time. They like both sleep on me, and it's like I feel bad waking them up and getting them out of bed. Yeah. So sometimes I get out of bed a little bit like later, just lay in bed, watch TikToks or something. Yeah. Oh. Watch texture TikToks. <laughs> Have you watched? <laughs> I've actually any? watched them. Yeah, yeah. I watched really? like a lot of them. Like I didn't know who you were initially, so yeah. I looked you up a little bit, and then uh, I've actually seen like. A good amount of your TikToks, like in the past, or like all the voice actor oh. ones I've I've seen before, like it just showed up on my feed before. <laughs> I just didn't know it was you, kind of a thing. But yeah, I watched those. Those are really entertaining, of course. Yeah, it's, I mean, I, I went over like a lot of your TikToks. It's, it's wild. Fun. I enjoy it. It's wild to me because obviously people who are larger in the gaming space they use TikTok, so like it, it's not that mind blowing that people see mine. But like when someone does tell me that they've seen my TikToks, like. That's just crazy to me that you've seen them. So yeah, <laughs> the, I see a lot of TikToks within like the Valorant field in general. So like yeah. that, like because I'm on TikTok like probably more than I should be, as <laughs> yeah. are most people I imagine. But uh, yeah, exactly me. I my my morning routine is I'll I'll get on TikTok. I'll like clear my notifications and everything. But if I stay on TikTok, I won't get out of bed for a while. So I have to put on music to get up. Like I had to get off the app and put on music because I know I won't open TikTok if the music's on. Mm -hmm. So, um, I do, I do want to know your routine throughout the day as a pro player because that's very interesting to me. Because I think mm -hmm. I'm gonna be surprised when you when you say something. So like, do you do you do scrims every day or like what? Mm -hmm. Can you run through that? Yeah, yeah, I got you. Um, so I'm one of the ones who stay up later. So my schedule is like just pushed down in general. So I would probably wake up around like noon, like mm -hmm. on the dot. And then my scrims will start probably around 2 p.m. Central and last, you know, about like four to potentially five, six hours. Mm -hmm. So and so I'd get up, normally grab like a snack, maybe like a small snack. I don't tend to eat a lot in the morning. I'm not like a huge breakfast person. I guess that'd be lunch for most people. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't tend to eat a lot. I'd uh, probably get like some G or something like that, get myself like going, get, get myself awake, stuff like that. Uh, I'll probably hang out with my cats, maybe watch some stuff, and then start scrims around like 2 p.m. ish. And then that probably lasts like five, six, seven hours sometimes, depends on the day. And then after that's over, I tend to just pretty much chill for me an hour, like just hang low. And then afterwards, I would stream most of the time in my free time. So afterwards, mm -hmm. it'd be like free time initially, right? And or like individual time to improve on individual stuff, whatever it may be. Maybe after scrim to something that like I really want to get, like to get down, maybe as simple as like maybe a KO lineup or something. Mm -hmm. And something I realized in scrims, oh, I needed this or I needed that or I need something like that, right? And I may also, personally, I'll sit down and go like find something that like I feel like I really could have used at the moment. Um, but other than that, like probably just mostly just chill and then I would stream for, I try to get a minimum of four hour stream. And so that ends up making me stream probably until like minimum, like normally type 12 a.m., <laughs> which mm -hmm. I guess is late for most people, but I should probably till 12 a.m. And since I wake up late, I probably like, Afterwards, I'll probably just chill for the next like three or four hours. So I sleep like really fucking late. Like, sorry for swearing. <laughs> no, you really late, uh, Swear like four away. or five a.m. Uh, like in the morning. And I, yeah, I sleep probably like really super super late. And in that time, I just probably just chill with some friends or we just watch something, whatever maybe. But yeah, mm -hmm. is that uh, how does it line up with a lot of the other uh, players' schedules, or is it like? is kind of they're just like an overlap of when you should be like you just have to be there for scrims and then everyone else is kind of like different schedules um i wouldn't i would say mine's a little bit more extreme in terms of how late it goes mm -hmm. <laughs> probably on the more extreme side but um i imagine most people probably sleep pretty late mm -hmm. i i do know some like pro players some like teammates who sleep like relatively early, like you know, like I don't know, like one, two a.m. If you call it relatively early, but I know a lot of play players who stream like who sleep really late, like three a.m., four a.m. I sleep like really late. Though. I sleep even like later than that sometimes. But yeah, yeah that, that's how I am personally. But I imagine most of my teammates are probably around the same 
I'm um, sure they wake up like a good amount of time before scrims. They would scrim and then they'd probably proceed to either stream or if not streaming, I don't know what they do in the free time. They go mm -hmm. out. A lot of my teammates go out. Yeah. With, without like, obviously you're going to know what you should and shouldn't say when it comes to what you guys are like working on. Um, but like, how much of of things do you guys keep secret when you scrim? Like, is there a lot that you you don't want to show in scrims that you like, whether it's, uh, you know, strats on a map or <coughs> like, I don't know exactly. But like, do you guys try to keep a lot of things secret? Yeah, I mean, as a pro player, especially when you're like competing at the highest level, um, you know, teams will do will take and get any advantage they can in terms of like even small things well more, maybe small but so like for example like composition like what what comp you're yeah. running right what agents you're running is like can be very important it tells a lot to how a team is going to play right if people are playing like, certain agents that like show oh they're gonna be an exact heavy team or like you know uh, do you want to have heavy hits or like a really big hit team kind of a thing right run a down team right then you have like an idea of how they're going to play it and so like for example, like for that reason, we don't generally scrim any team that we're going to play against in trades. For example, I think we're we're playing C9 last. I don't think we've scrimmed C9 this whole entire VCT because of that reason, because we're going to play them, right? So like you don't want to leak your comp is big. And like, obviously, you can say like strats, you know, like mm -hmm. maybe like how you default, you know, like how like what are our tendencies and stuff like that? How we like plan on playing out the game is like really important because and then we're like you're competing and you don't want to give the enemy any sort of advantage if you can. Mm -hmm. And so you do try to. For the most part, hide as much as you can, right? People don't, you know, go on my stream and ask me and stuff like that too all the time. But yeah, I, and then you're supposed to just try to keep everything confidential as much as possible. I think it's interesting to to think about the, because like in in traditional, like not esports, like football or basketball or whatever, every team has their own, like either it's practice team or they have enough people to have. Um, just like scrimmages or run plays throughout a practice. But when it comes to esports, like you guys just have enough for your team. That's it. So I wonder, I just thought of this now. I wonder if it's going to mm -hmm. get to a point where people are having practice teams or something like that. Cause like, it's, it's interesting to think that I saw uh, a podcast. I can't remember who was on it, but it was from optic and they were saying like, whenever they play a team that's or like scrim a team that's going like super try hard and they have to like reserve themselves from <coughs> like going like actually beating them or like trying to beat them because they're just trying to work on intricate details of the game and so like it's interesting to hear that they they feel like they have to reserve themselves just to work on certain things you know yeah, I mean, that, that definitely does happen at times. Regarding, like, the whole training partner thing, the only thing I can, like, realistically think of is I do know some main team scrim their academy teams. Oh, that yeah. That is the thing. Like, to yeah. an extent, yeah. I guess you use them as a training partner, but, like, to be honest with you, the academy teams are also, like, good. Like, I appreciate sure every academy yeah. team, like, can definitely put up numbers against the main roster. It's not like it's, like, a huge skill gap. But, um, you know, regarding, like, the whole entire, like, reserving yourself during scrims and stuff like that, I do think... uh. You know, a lot of teams go into scrims with an idea of what they want to like focus on for the scrim. Yeah. Like you said, like a certain intricate detail, for example. Uh, maybe might may not even be intricate. It could be like you know a whole entire new like default, or whatever, maybe or something like actually like foundational, like big. And then I don't necessarily think people you have to reserve yourself all the time. I do think you can just play out the scrim, and there's lots of things you can work on. So like, because there's, there's a lot of things you can work out within a round, right? Obviously, you have like buy rounds, force round, eco rounds, stuff like that. And so like. Even if like you're like I don't know owning a team or whatever, you could probably still find things you can work on. Obviously, um, I know I do know some teams like hard specifically go into scrim trying to work on a specific thing, which is also like something you can do and it, it does work as well. Um, but I wouldn't say a lot of times you have to like reserve yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't think it happens as often as you would think. At least I'd say it also heavily depends on who you're scrimming. Yeah. So like you know some I'm sure some teams are way more like uh picky with who they scrim for example they like would only scrim like the top tier one teams for example right they get the best kind of practice as much as they can versus mm -hmm. like scrimming you know like i don't know a lower tier team like a tier two tier three team which in that case like maybe then you might just be like, running them over or they might be playing it poorly and it could be potentially quote unquote bad practice because realistically a tier one team wouldn't play it like that and so like when you're practicing against something that you wouldn't realistically end up playing against it becomes kind of like bad practice because like the team you're going to play against when it actually matters is not going to play like that 
And so like it might like it's hard to say whether or not what you're trying to practice will actually work in actual game because mm-hmm. they probably wouldn't play like that if you're playing as a tier two, tier three team kind of a thing. So at times it can be bad practice if you scrim a team that's like a lower tier, but you know, sometimes you don't really have a choice. Did you go through the the whole tier like the tier list, I guess, of teams? Like how <laughs> did you did you climb that ladder? Uh, I personally would say I, I definitely hard climbed that ladder. Um, in terms of like the tier list, tier list, I hate the whole entire tier list thing. It's mm-hmm. all like opinionated in the end. It's all like depends mm-hmm. on like how people view things. Um, it's hard to say because like there's definitely like gaps within the scene, but it's also at times like very close. Like look at VCT right now. A lot of teams people consider tier two teams are literally beating D tier like tier one teams. Mm-hmm. Right, so it's like like this tier like this whole entire tier one, tier two, tier three stuff shifts so much so often. Yeah, and it's like really hard to like keep it consistent kind of a thing. But uh, you know, if you want to call it tier one, I mean, a lot of like the well-established teams are like, uh, like you know, the teams that are like one thing slash have the most experienced players slash been like top. I don't know. I say like top eight, right? Or like if you can, maybe the top twelve. Because making the VCT like the top twelve mainly kind of a thing is like pretty much tier one. It's not easy to do. Yeah, yeah. That's just like what I consider it. Um, I totally forgot what your original question was. What was it again? Like, did you did you climb that? Oh, I did climb it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So for me, uh, I definitely would say I was like the peak example of climbing it. I'd say the peak of how I got this far was definitely to do with uh, a crew, my previous team. Yes. And uh, a crew, I would say we started out probably as we were probably considered well, we're a free team initially, right? Just picked up four players who've been competing, myself, uh, plus myself, sorry. And then we would just start playing their tier two, tier three tourneys, like the Mickey Mouse tourneys or NSGs, net, nice tourneys, right? And those like yeah. the most... It was like the best turns to play for any like starting up team kind of a thing. So I guess we were like started probably as like a tier three team. We're all recognized, I'm sure, within like the scene because we're all played like, you know, high level ranked. We all know everybody. Everyone knows us kind of a thing. Right. And we would start scrimming like the tier two teams. Right. And then from there, we would just like constantly play out the industries, put up these tier two turnies and kept winning them. And then I guess it's just, uh, you know, give it like half a year later and uh, a crew is recognized as like, you know, top tier two team to establish ourselves because it's just, we grinded it out for like months on months on months. And then uh, after like a crew was established as a tier two team, I just happened to get opportunity for a tier one team. So, which is Sentinels, right? Um, at least I'll consider Sentinels tier one. There's only people saying Sentinels aren't tier one anymore, but you know, besides the point. Um, yeah. So then I got the opportunity to play for Sentinels as a result because I was performing well on it within the tier two scene. And so they gave me a shot and that's how I am on Sentinels today. <laughs> uh, is it frustrating to to hear? Uh, I mean, Sentinels have gotten a lot of uh, flack lately, and but yeah. I don't think people they don't ever think that like it's it's impossible to win everything, and like I want to know as a as a player for mm-hmm. for Sentinels, is it is it frustrating to hear, or do you just like know that? A lot of people just don't know what they're talking about. I mean, okay, it's always frustrating to hear, right? Uh, it's it's very sad. Obviously, like, you know, I we're nothing without our fans to an extent, right? Yeah, one hundred percent true. But you know, I, I love my fans. I love any and all the fans, and I hate to let any and all fans look down at all. Period, right? And obviously, we, uh, Sentinels has a huge fan base because of you know all the winning we've done in the past, not including me technically, <laughs> but all the winning Sentinels has uh, in the past, right? And obviously. As a result, you know, we're not winning. It's just like very upsetting for fans who supported us when we were winning kind of a thing. And it's, uh, it's definitely a very sad thing in general. It's very frustrating to not win. I mean, just even in general as a competitor, it's very frustrating not to win, right? Yeah. I, the only reason I'm this far in my competitive career is because I've just always been very competitive. I just don't like losing, as do most people, I imagine. But so, yeah, it's been very frustrating losing for sure. And um, I mean... I hope we can come back in that regard. I, I I do think there is a lot of things, a lot of things that, you know, general public just doesn't know. Like yeah. genuinely just not know, right? And it's things like none of us are ever gonna like share in public either. It's not something we should share in public. Plus the whole entire like we've had to deal with a lot of things. I think Shazam worded, worded it really well. I could probably pull up the tweet, but there's just a, a lot of things that just happen that are like happening that like we don't have control over. And it's just like super hard to play around at times it's very frustrating you know like for example we spend two whole weeks getting great practice really good practice screwing really well doing really well everything's working well and then all of a sudden you know family emergency and someone's extremely sick and it's like 
you know, during the most important game to Bidley or most important time during our like our season. And it's mm-hmm. just like, you know, uh, we lose the game. Yeah, it's frustrating for sure. But like, you know, it's just a shame that, you know, I think, think like obviously like love, love to both of them, right? How everything, everything works out for them. It's just a shame that, um, you know, we get so much hate for this when like we really had no control over it and shit happens. Like, I, I don't know. It's just really unfortunate how it played out, obviously. But there's we've been dealing with a lot of stuff in general, and it's just and then we're like humans, stuff happens, and you can't always win. And then, like you said, um, but I, to be fair though, a lot of these games are really, really close too. Like I don't know, obviously we're zero four, but like you should look at these score lines. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of these games could really go all their, like a whole different direction. I think almost every single series, except for the Optic series, were like, well, I think it went in for literally. We had eleven thirteen against LG. Like, could have gone 13-11. We won Breeze 14-16, and then we got rolled on Fracture 13-4. Funny enough, two weeks before that, we played against LG, we beat up with Fracture. Besides the point, though. Right? The game's like, obviously, they could have practiced it, and they, and they did well, right? Mm-hmm. But, like, that, that, could, that could have been 2-0 series. We could have started out, like, 1-0. And then we ended up playing, um, I think, we played EG. EG was uh, 13-11, 13-10. Like, I, these games could have gone either way. Like, it's always, like, it's always in the moment on the day thing. Every single game is close. We end up losing 0-2, but, like, it was super close. It could easily go on e- either way. I'm sure they could obviously say the same thing if they lost. But, like, the whole point is, like, the whole scene is, like, really close. A mm-hmm. lot closer than you think. Um, and Valorant, I, in my opinion, just doesn't have enough rounds. And, like, it can be, like, it's very momentum-based. Pistol rounds have a huge impact. One single person's micro play could just win you a round and spiral the control when you multiple rounds. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like on the day, it's a whole different, you know, as is like, as is everything. But on the day, it's, it depends on the day. A certain team can win on, on the day. Like, we easily could, I genuinely think we easily could be like, theoretically, maybe it's copium, but we could be like 4 0 or 3 1 easily. Just like look at the score lines. You could have easily gone differently, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think we get a lot more hate than we need to. People just look at the fact that we lost. And like, don't get me wrong, obviously, Sindel's has had a passive just like sure winning not losing a single map because you know the past everything like that but you know team teams have caught up you know they're good people people get better and teams get better and as uh, the good thing is you make every game interesting and the games are really close and every game is close for the most part every game within the whole entire bct right now is really close because na i think within top 12 is like relatively close in terms of skill level um yeah and then obviously phase sorry i forgot the last game Phase was 13, 11, 14, 16. Like, I, I don't know. I mean, well, how, how much closer can it get? But yeah, it's unfortunate. We get a lot of shit for losing in the end, and it, it's unfortunate. And, um, you know, obviously, we could, we could always play better. I'm not saying we're playing perfectly by any means. Uh, we definitely could always play better. Mm-hmm. Um, but we proved a lot, but we always have a lot of circumstances that we have to deal with, unfortunately, that makes it even harder for us. And it's just unfortunate how things play out. But hey, man, that's just life. I, I, do you pay attention to like Valorant subreddit or like competitive subreddit? <laughs> I mean, okay. As much as I love to say no, I don't. I'd say I fall for that trap, and I do look at it at times. Um, highly recommend any pro player that is not doing well to not ever look at it because it's just really bad for you. Social media is just terrible for you if you're not doing well, especially being a Sentinels player. I feel like Sentinels have <laughs> the biggest fans, the most fans. But also, as a result, the most haters. Yeah, and so it's like, I mean, it's it's like whatever for me. Like, I, I don't I don't really let it bother me. Mm-hmm. Um, hence why I still look at it, kind of thing. I'm just like more interested, I guess. And I just always enjoyed like reading through threads and stuff like that. But it definitely, um, I mean, yeah, I fall victim to looking at Valance, you know, Val competitive, and even VL forums at times when I get bored. I saw one today because I was gonna ask you, um about that but i was looking on and there was one that said sentinels needs to throw uh the cloud nine game the cloud nine match yeah yeah i saw that one yeah i don't i don't i didn't understand it i what do you know it's the something reason i think it's it? okay i think i read through that because i was curious but it was something to do with like let me think about it real quick it's to do with the point system for lcq basically is like the gist of it because mm-hmm. at this point we don't make this masters we already can't qualify at this point but we can still qualify for lcq the last chance call for for champs yeah and i mean i guess like the tldr is basically it's just to do with point system and then losing to c9 would be good i think theoretically because then because i think we're already guaranteed to be like last in the group i could be wrong Wait, I don't think I'm wrong, actually. Okay, anyways, it's something to do with, like, point system, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And then, like, I guess losing to C9, for whatever reason, I would have it so C9 gets more points, maybe. And then, plus how many points they earned in the previous 
LCQ, I, I don't know. Something in point system wise, man. I haven't looked into it enough. Maybe yeah. I should, but I don't know. I just something to do with that. People, I mean, people are just. <laughs> it's so odd to me that like, I don't know. Maybe there is a lot more that goes on in competitive that like. I mean, not maybe. There is a lot more that goes on, but I just I saw like a comment on it was like they're not gonna throw the game. Like they're not just gonna. But like yeah, it's like I don't I don't think anyone realistically would throw something. I know you guys aren't gonna, but like no, I don't think so. <laughs> Definitely. I don't see the reason of like throwing the game. I don't know. In the end, like I said this before my stream too, like I'm always a competitor more than anything else. Yeah. And I feel like I'm not like I would never throw the game even if it was if you're allowed to throw the game. I would never throw the game just because I hate losing. I said it earlier, I absolutely hate losing. And mm -hmm. especially, and I don't plan on going zero five. Like, please. Yeah. I pray. Yeah, you got you got more pride <laughs> but, than that. <laughs> yeah, I got I got a lot of pride in me, man. I mean, I got this far, and I definitely not gonna let me just like I'm not gonna get complacent. I'm not gonna like even it even if theoretically it'd be better for us to lose. I don't really I don't even know like the math behind it. I wish maybe I should look into it more, but I mean I'm not gonna throw it either way. Yeah. I should definitely like. Or I, or I assume we're gonna try our best for sure. I mean, we're definitely gonna try our best to win the game either way. I'm not even just gonna assume we're definitely gonna try our best to win. Yeah. What, how and is I, it? Something's gonna stop us from doing that. I don't think. Mm -hmm. How is it? Uh, being a a, pl a pro player with the the job security is that something you think about? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it is to do with contracts, but definitely like you know it depends how your contract is specifically. I'm so sure I'm contract contracts out contracts. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> Still just started twice. So, some contracts um may not have as much like security for you in the worst case scenario right yeah. um but definitely it's like it is definitely a thing right there's no guarantee you have a job sometimes like you can get cut the next week you wouldn't even like know kind of a thing right and theoretically mm -hmm. quote unquote there goes your job obviously that's when the contract really comes in handy because maybe within contract you know you get paid for like two or three more months kind of thing after you get cut something like that right um and that like that's important within a contract to have uh other than that i mean it definitely crosses your mind at times but i feel like as a pro player more often than not it's just you just you just have that, that mindset and just keep grinding it out and keep going so if you get cut like yeah it sucks but it doesn't mean you're out of it completely you get yeah keep competing still keep having that drive to compete and hopefully get another team kind of a thing yeah yeah i mean yeah, you're not wrong. Like it definitely like is on the mind at times. You know, you never know when you're gonna get cut at times. And obviously losing your job is like very bad. <laughs> um but, but hey man, I think that is part of it. It's a very cutthroat industry to be honest. Yeah, but you I I, I feel like as you you grind with like a, being a pro player and stuff, that's why a lot of people they stream and they have that that yeah, 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 yeah. Are you are you mm -hmm. on YouTube? Are you uploading on YouTube? Uh, I'm not actually. Uh, something I need to get into actually. Really need to get into. Are actually. you are you uploading on TikTok? No, I'm not on TikTok. Because I tried to find you on TikTok. Cause... Yeah, I'm on TikTok. Yeah. So, I have a TikTok, my own personal TikTok, which, uh, but I'm sure. I mean, I'll probably start uploading on TikTok and YouTube soon. I should be soon. I'm actually talking to, uh, talking to. I'm actually signed to an agency. Which I signed to Prodigy and this. Uh, one of the prodigy guys wants to talk to me tomorrow about YouTube, but yeah. We, so like, yeah, I'll probably we go on yeah, TikTok yeah. and we, <laughs> me and you, right now, we should. Uh, I can tag you, and obviously, I'm not gonna blow you up, but like, I mean, I mean I'll take it, man. It, it'll it'll start. I did, I, well, I did the fade mm -hmm. voice actor, and mm -hmm. she had twelve followers when I uploaded, and I tagged her, and I was. This was so crazy to me that she, like, now mm -hmm. has... A, I mean, she uploaded some TikToks, but, like, mm -hmm. she gained, like, almost a thousand followers or something from... No, I mean, I was like, insane. Whoa. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I really I'll, feel I'll like... I'll take it. I'll take it. I feel like you could you could do so well on TikTok. Yeah, I can. I mean, I can probably do well on TikTok and YouTube. Um, It just... I guess I'm just lazy to do it. Gotta go find yeah. an editor and everything. It takes a little yeah. bit of time. Oh, there's there's so many editors I would love to to work with you. I I think, I think yeah, I just, I, I'm just like picky, I guess. I mean, I haven't even looked into it too much. Uh, I've gotten like DMs from people willing to edit for for mm -hmm. me and stuff like that. But 
you know, and then I feel like I'm probably just going to see, look in, look out for like ones who are like well established or like mm-hmm. ones who have edited it before for like other big names or whatever, maybe, and then pay them as a result. We'll see. Yeah. So it goes out. Something I definitely got to work on though. How long have you been streaming for? Streaming, I've been in general, probably for mm-hmm. like many, many years, uh, on and off for many, many years. But uh, obviously, I think after Game Science Sentinels has heavily boosted my viewers and everything, right? <laughs> as it should, and, yeah. As, yeah, and as a result, I've definitely been streaming like probably like I'll say probably around the same, maybe a little bit more nowadays. I feel like more inclined to stream, more motivation to stream as a result. Um, so yeah, I have been streaming a bit more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but so I'll say it's like whatever the original question, like back to the original question of like you know what do you do other than you know happen to be like for job stability, right? Uh, content creation is definitely there as a side thing, right? Uh, I think that's what you're trying to get into, right? If you do end up losing your professional contract or salary or whatever, maybe. Yeah, definitely a lot of people have content creation on the side. I just mm-hmm. call content creation with like, you know, streaming, yeah. YouTube, um, TikTok, so on and so forth, right? It's definitely a thing. Something I need to like get established myself as well. All I have is a stream right now. Uh, I enjoy streaming, so I, I stream a lot. Uh, but yeah, I need to get like a YouTube and a TikTok going as well, 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think that's the biggest thing that... Uh, that everything or that everyone does that really probably eases the mind. I mean, even as a content creator, I feel like there's still that that not because you don't. I don't know your your Twitch payouts are never the same. Like you could have an off month or whatever, but like it is more. It is. It's better to have you know all those incomes that that can make you feel more secure and and i mean people people love your stream and i think they would absolutely love youtube videos that they can watch if they miss the stream and stuff like that so i, th- I think it's a great idea mm-hmm. for sure yeah i mean yeah, I, I knew that i just, I just, <laughs> I just like slow on it i've been lazy to mm-hmm. um set up a youtube something yeah. i definitely need to get on yeah uh I do, I saw this, because I looked up your name on TikTok, and I saw, uh, I think it was a Sentinels TikTok, of your top three favorite games of all time. Games? Yeah. I don't remember what I said. I rambled so much for that. You said, <laughs> you said... There's so many good games. I thought that over afterwards. I, I think so you many. said CS. Yeah. Uh, Halo. And yeah. MW2. Makes sense. Yeah, sounds and about right. I love the MW2 pick, by the way. That's, I mean, that's that's like yeah. that was my first Call of Duty back in 2009. I was very young, should not have been playing, but I did anyway. <laughs> don't me too. Don't worry. Uh, did you? I have an MW2 question. If you can remember, what was your go-to class setup? What would you run? I was one of those guys who quickscoped all the time. I would just have an intervention. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, just You're intervention. You're a yeah, I was a quicksilver. That's all I ever did. That's what I mean. I, later, like all my hours. <laughs> yeah, later in in Call of Duty's life cycle, I I was a quicksilver. That's how I started on YouTube. Was that I was, uh, a, a sniper, and so I mm-hmm. think that's pretty interesting. I yeah, was, I was just a quicksilver. I was I used the an ACR with grenade launcher and ACR one man mm-hmm. army pro, and so I would just new YouTube. YouTube you yeah. would. One man army back to your ACR with grenade launcher and just keep rock- new to me, right? Yeah, play more too. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was strong. Yeah. A little bit cringe, but all good. Yeah, it was really cringe. See, what the first the first iteration of lineups was a new tube line up, lineup. Mm-hmm. You'd right off spawn, you'd line it up. And you have a lineup, yeah, you can kill someone right off the spawn, basically. Yeah. 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 That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So it was. What was the first game you like really grinded? Like what was, that you really got into? That's hard, man. Let me think. It'd definitely be very young. Probably like second grade ish. I want to say I played like Halo Two, and uh-huh. my mom gave me like a year of like Xbox Live, and I was like super young. Love and uh, I remember like I got I got like super super like high up there in terms of, like level, like near like professional level, and, like as a second grader. And so I just remember like. I don't know if you know like Lil Poison, um, but he's like he's like in Guinness World Records, he's like an MLG pro. He's like the youngest MLG MLG pro, something like that. Mm-hmm. I was like a year older than him, and like, people were like comparing me to him at the time actually, because I was my name was like Lil Win W E N, 
there's a story behind that, but don't worry about that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I want to bear. That's like probably like probably where my gaming started from because I played it like 24 seven as like a second grader. I played it till really late at night and it was really probably extremely unhealthy for me. And my parents are really concerned. In fact, they canceled my Xbox Live. Xbox Live subscription at one point because of that because I would just probably I would stay upstairs whenever and just play on the Xbox playing Halo 2 Xbox Live as like a little kid all all day long absolutely terrible for me so after that was gone I was sad unfortunate and then I proceeded to probably playing probably like RuneScape for many years RuneScape Maple Story I just like those two games are just I grew up on those two I would say a lot and then I probably moved into COD and League of Legends then CSGO, then Valorant. It's mm-hmm. probably like the main games for me. Um, yeah, that's, that's like largely to do with that whole question of like when I th- top three games. I like had to say CSGO because kind of, I feel like, I mean, being part of the CSGO or CS franchise for a while, I definitely have a huge respect for it. It's been CS 1.6 is CS 1.6 is super old. So like a lot of like I have a huge amount of respect for it as a result. because It's been going for forever. And then I said Halo because I, like I said, I, th- I grew up on Halo. Basically, I think it was like the first game I like really like put a lot of time into. And I was like a, as a little kid, and it's still going to this day. So I had to say Halo for that reason. And then uh, what was the last game I said? Call of Duty, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I remember like middle school when I was playing mod- M- MW2. So probably, like one of the most happy periods ever. I would say like I enjoyed mm-hmm. the heck out playing that game. I remember for sure. And yeah, for, as a result, I, I had like mentioned that. That's like probably where all my answers stem from. So like myself <laughs> yeah which makes i love sense, it yeah i think i think i would put mw2 halo 2 and maybe gears of war 2 as my top gears three. yeah those are all just like especially like halo 2 was i remember the land parties that like my, my i have older brothers and i wouldn't get a play unless someone didn't mm-hmm. show up so i that's when i would get to play was I would get thrown in there and then I would since I was the youngest I would get thrown on the best person's team to kind of like even it out mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then but I I have such great memories from from those times so I, I really res- I respect your answers yeah land parties were fun I, I forgot all about those I the only time I remember having land parties was I have an older brother too mm-hmm. he's actually funny to visit me right now he's actually leaving in two days but yeah he uh he used to play with his friends and they would play Warcraft 3 Frozen Throne. I don't know if you know it. Mm-mm. They play Warcraft 3 Frozen Throne and just like a bunch of different... You know Dota, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Dota originated as like a custom map, a custom game f- from Warcraft 3 Frozen Throne. Okay. Warcraft 3 uh, is a like RTS game, you know, like StarCraft and stuff like that. And RTS is like a dead genre at this point, unfortunately. But um, yeah, so it was like, it's like one of those uh custom maps that someone made for it like they just use like the base game and they just put a bunch of like characters and they made dota it's like a game it was, po- it was like the most popular custom map game and now it's its own individual game literally and it's big but yeah so i used to play that and there's like a bunch of different games that people made you can think of it like i don't know like tf uh tf2 has a bunch of like custom gap custom games dota has literally custom maps custom games you can do stuff like that it's like mm-hmm. um fan-made like custom games you can play just like stems off of the main original games but not compl- not related to the game anymore after that but yeah i used to play some of that uh at land with on land i guess with uh, my brother and his friends mm-hmm. that was fun well i want i i do want to know what it's like <laughs> to uh join a, a professional team so i want you to walk me through from the first time where you approached um you know uh, how far out were you trialing with them or scrimming with them or just stuff like that? Because I think I think that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Um. Well, I consider a career professional team, but um, you know, I'll probably talk about Sentinels in a second. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I did. Um. Yeah. I mean, for a crew, it was for a crew. We were uh, a well-established free agent team at that time. We like win a lot of tournaments, stuff like that, and then as a result, we. You need an org to back you up, right? In terms of salary, you know, so you can full commit to playing professional full time and like forget about the whole entire like other responsibilities you have, mm-hmm. right? And so then as a result, I think a crew had contacted us at one point, and then as a result, we got signed to a crew. Um, yeah, nothing too crazy for that. It was just like playing as a free agent team and then doing well. And as a result, an org hit us up and we took it. For Sentinels, um, 
Sentinels, uh, obviously, I had a connection on Sentinels, as most people know. Tens, Tyson, right? He's uh, one of my best friends, I would say. And I've known him since way before Valorant, so, like during the CS days. I would hang out with him, um, play CS with him, stuff like that. Because I was like a semi pro CSGO player. Uh, and Tyson was a pro CSGO player, but we would like play a bunch of different things together, have fun. We play a lot of games in our off time together. Um, yeah, I even met up with him quite a few times at this point. Uh, so yeah, he was a connection I had already on Sentinels. And then at one point, I guess they were looking for a fifth player, and I had already like I would say I was pretty established as like a decent tier two player. I hope, I hope that's what people viewed me. <laughs> and uh, I statistically, I think I did well. I think I was doing I was doing well, right? And as a result, I think he brought me up to the team as a potential option. And then the team had heard of me already, uh, obviously from from I, I don't know about CS necessarily, but they definitely heard me from the whole Valorant scene, Valorant scene, because I've been doing well in Valorant, mm -hmm. and so. They, as a result, they gave me a trial, gave me a shot. Uh, it wasn't that long. Unfortunately, it was really tight timing. It was, I would say, like a week or two before the whole entire VCT like started. The whole entire like qualifier started, so it was really tight. And that was as much time to put uh, to get, like as much stuff settled down, and everything like that. But uh, yeah, so it was it was a pretty tight period for sure. But it, it was mostly from I'm assuming it was, it was from Tyson rec like recommending me and then me take getting the trial and getting the spot as a result mm -hmm. you know people say i only i'm only sentinel because of tens i won't say it's necessarily true uh obviously it's largely to do with like my accomplishments within the scene you're not gonna just pick up a player who is good <laughs> at least i hope not i hope i didn't get on because of that reason I, I don't think so i i respect myself in terms of like i think i'm a pretty decent player and i think i can definitely like add a lot i can compete at the highest level yeah. and i'm mean, hopefully i can prove so but yeah, so they gave me a shot, and then I got it as a result. I'm glad that you don't, that you know, about, like about yourself, you're confident, and you're not thinking what other people are saying or anything like that. I, I think you know, you know what you're, you're worth and how you, how you do as a player, because you are a good player. You are, you deserve to be there. There's a reason that you're there, and, and I think that you know mm -hmm. that. And I, I'm glad, I'm glad that's the case. Yeah, I mean that's the whole point. You know, people say like I'm only on team because of tens, and I mean, I don't think a team like Sentinels would pick up a player if they weren't actually good. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't yeah. matter friend or not. It's just, just not I, how it works. I think it. Yeah, I think it's it could be just a, a bonus that, you know, there's already that friendship there and stuff yeah. like that. I do want to. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say, just like in general. Like in anything higher up, and like in the real world too, it's a lot of it is networking and connections. It's a little bit cringe, I would say, to an extent. Obviously, like how well you play can also get you on like a top tier one team in terms of, you know, gaming. But also like in the real world too, it's just like it's a lot of connections in the end. Networking is important. Like you know, just in general, like uh, it's important to have good networking and connections. Mm -hmm. That's what I focus on all the time is my network. Um, I, yeah. I don't. I try not to make it like when I talk about it, I try not to make it sound like I like I use people or anything like that because it can sound like that if I say it in a certain way. But that's it's not the case at all. I, I genuinely, yeah. uh, you know, love talking to every like I don't talk to people to get to other people like I just talk to. Yeah, people yeah, yeah. But that's it's one of the things that I focus on. I tell everyone to focus on like the connections and network that I have created it's for a reason and like i think it it benefits like it i mean i'm sure it didn't it wasn't the only reason but it helps when i when i ask you to come on the podcast like and i tell you who else has been on here and you say or you think to yourself that uh tyson was on here that it's just a little bit more comfortable and so it, it does help and it like it even if it doesn't like not an immediate yes, like you can at least think about it and like check it out or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you want to hear my perspective on it, yeah, go um, ahead. yeah, I mean, for you, I think when you asked me, I was pretty like open to doing stuff like podcasts. Anyways, I find it fun. I don't, I enjoy talking in general and talking about myself in general, I guess. And so, like, I thought it'd be fun to do either way, but it definitely helped the fact that, like, you know, I guess I was suspicious. Like, is there any point in me spending? a lot of my time to like do a podcast for someone who I feel like isn't 
like going to get much out of it kind of a thing it sounds like really really egotistical to an yep. extent yeah but <laughs> no, like I but like you. in the end you know like i only have so much time in my day in the first time in the first place and so like i feel like if i'm gonna spend my time to like you know not necessarily help someone out but like you know spend time with someone or like talk to them for like their sake kind of a thing or like for a podcast kind of a thing i'd probably want to do for someone who i feel like is more like it would actually get out there and get like you know a lot more recognition slash a lot more views kind of a thing it sounds really really bad honestly yeah, but like I, I guess that's like the reality of the matter i don't know I, I hate to say it like that but i guess that's just how it is so like like you said the fact that you interviewed uh tyson and kaide like yeah man i noticed it i'm not like i'm not gonna lie i did notice this like that is the reality of the matter I'm yeah kind of shitty to say but like yeah it is well i mean i don't know uh, it, it sounds bad but no, yeah. no i get it i get it i think people understand too like it's just i it's so it baffles me that that's even on my resume, you know, like I, I haven't done, I hadn't, they had no reason. They had no business talking to me. Like I had 3000 subscribers on YouTube. I probably had like in the range of like 10 to 15,000 followers on TikTok. Like I did, had no business happening at all. And especially cause it was originally just supposed to be Kai day. And then she was like, do you want tens to come on too? And I was like, Kai day, is that even a question? If I want tens to come on to, um, but yeah, like it, it helps. I did, uh, when you're talking and you're trying, you're trying to like navigate without sounding too bad or whatever. Um, I had a, a popular Valorant creator tell me, he was like, I just, I, I don't think it's worth it. And I was like, I think you could have worded that a little bit better, but like, I get what you mean. Like I understand, but, um, yeah, I just, I, I, I get it, but I also, I feel like a lot of people know what it's like to want something and like want someone to talk to you and like be able to do content. So I think like there's that factor. And then also, um, you just, a lot of people are busy and yeah, I'm like genuinely just really busy. I don't have time, free time. I, mean, I told you my schedule. I have a little free time really late at night, but I don't have as much as I can because I try to get in a stream plus scrims and I don't get that much free time. And then like, I don't have time. Like I say this to a lot of people, I don't have time for even a girlfriend. Like I genuinely don't. <laughs> I genuinely don't. I like, yeah. I can't, I can't commit any time to a girlfriend at all. So even if I wanted one, I could not. A lot of, um, for the uh, most part. Yeah. A lot of pro players that I've asked to be on the podcast, like Sabrosa, he just plain said, like, I just don't have time. And like, and it's, it's valid. And especially depending on which time you ask what's going on if it's off like you know you got you maybe have a little dull period in this mm -hmm. two week or whatever like i'm not really sure schedules but like yeah but at the same time <clears throat> you constantly have to be sharpening your skills like it's not just i'm just gonna take off for a little bit you might take a, a, a day or so break to mm -hmm. refresh but like at mm -hmm. the same time you're competing and it's like yeah i i understand i i'm not i don't get yeah. mad like the worst thing mm -hmm. people can do is say no so yeah i mean then i do like enjoy like i said i think it's a hard personality thing too like the one i feel like the big reason i'm doing this because i do enjoy doing this kind of thing like have, talking to people and you know, just talking about myself like i said i enjoy like doing that in general mm -hmm. and so like that's probably like one of the big reasons why i even like chose to do this kind of a thing and uh like you said i do have like a, a period right now i mean this is a good like breath of fresh air to be honest because i feel like my life gets really it gets like it gets in a routine just like I do the same thing every day repeat rinse and repeat over and over again so like having a little change here and there honestly it's like it's nice to have for sure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i also i do want to i i was gonna say this earlier um i tens was he's the he's the nicest guy i've ever met in my life he's so yeah he's super nice he's he's i i've always thought when uh i don't know someone said that he's like a golden retriever and i was like He's just happy to be there. I love that. I love that comparison. So that's funny because yeah. uh, when I met uh, when I met Tyson the first time in, uh, in person, I went to Vancouver because I went to visit a friend. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he was dating Kaidi right at the time. This is actually before like anyone knew about Kaidi. Mm -hmm. So I, I met Kaidi before they anyone knew Kaidi kind of a thing. And I remember um, I met up with Tyson first. And I was with my friend, and my friend and, and I were talking about how Tyson is just like a dog. Cause he was, he was literally sitting there at the door, just looking out the window. Like I can imagine the tail just wagging. <laughs> He's looking like out the door, just waiting for Kaidi to come. I think Kaidi was at work. She was like a, at her at her part time job, or whatever, and she was like finishing up and coming 
to us because we were doing i think we were, we were doing axe throwing actually <laughs> but yeah uh we we're doing that and i just like me and my friend were just talking about how like tyson is literally a dog he was genuinely like sitting there just like not moving i can just imagine his tail wagging he's just waiting for kaidi to come it's funny he, he's super cute no, i love tyson yeah i just it's the funny. best um did you was it a lot to in your head to switch over to to valorant or was it a pretty pretty easy choice uh, i'd say it's like relatively pretty easy choice largely to do with the fact that i feel like the nac and vcs just like didn't really have much of a bright future and mm -hmm. i actually was getting to a point where i was getting like relatively sick of cs uh, and so like again a new game like this was like a definitely a brush of, a breath of fresh air and i like like new things in general so mm -hmm. i was looking forward to this for sure and yeah i mean I i'd say it's a pre relatively pretty easy switch you know part of me f feels like i could have stayed in cs and I, I think i would have made it in the end it's just new game new opportunity riot games right obviously i was very familiar with riot games and i do think cs go to an extent is like pretty poorly maybe managed not the right word but like in terms of like a lot of different things like riot is a very successful franchise or franchise company mm -hmm. and they um they like know what they're doing they listen to their fan base a lot and stuff like that and change a lot of different things and overall I've had like a very pleasant experience with riot for sure and yeah i think like i think as a player you could definitely trust riot to do things right and for csgo there's definitely been times where like it wasn't done perfectly or done to a way where like the fans or the people wanted or the players wanted kind of a thing it happens sometimes and so as a result i think it's like a pretty obvious switch from just developers alone i feel like right i knew we could trust riot kind of a thing so i switched over for that plus new games so like i like new games plus csgo i feel like any team was like definitely struggling you see the top any teams top uh yeah the top any teams doing really well and still not getting organization to like back them up kind of a thing it became like really really like it came really bad because and then like it's hard to compete if you're not getting paid a salary to like be able to put your full time into competing right that's the whole point even for valorant too right mm -hmm. all the free agent teams people are spending so much time grinding out scrims like my schedule for example like grinding out scrims every day trying to like make it basically and it's not it's it's, it's hard if you don't get signed don't get paid at one point you just have to like give up uh sometimes i've seen a lot of really good players man a lot of really good players a lot of x team who are like genuinely really good players and it's a shame but some of these guys have genuinely just given up their professional career because you just they couldn't get signed in time and they just didn't see it working out and so they just went back to like working stuff like that and it's really such a shame mm -hmm. it hurts to see sometimes yeah that's i don't know it's interesting i think i don't know i i, I would like to be i would like to talk to more people who at the jump originally made that switch because i don't think it could especially i always thought yeah like you had that foundation of riot backing this but like at the same time like nothing's guaranteed if it's gonna be something that people are gonna want to watch like like to an like to a uh, to a degree that it is now like it's it's part hard to like because valorant's huge yeah. It's, yeah it is i mean i think a lot of us are under the assumption that it would be huge because because it's riot games right mm -hmm. that's a like a big part of it it's like it's riot games is by you know a real or an already really big publisher of games and so it's like you know a good chance it pops off there's no guarantee 100 percent. but it was definitely like in my head at least i had a lot i have a lot of faith in riot games and they, they already have a, a well-established like audience in general and they know what they're doing i would say for the most part i mean look how big league is right mm -hmm. and so like yeah that's like you know a big part of the reason as well like why i feel like i could trust riot games to switch over kind of a thing and i mean and then like if not that like csgo just like for the anything like i said it's just it was it seemed like it was doomed like you see this team that consistently does well consistently does as best as they can and like we're like significantly like, better than you at the time better than me at the time and then you see them consistently doing well and still not getting an organization like if they can't get an organization like <laughs> there's like no chance like that like uh someone like me can like get on an organization unless like it would take like another like year or two to make it like really really make it i guess kind of a thing mm -hmm. or versus like you could just switch to a new game and have a completely brand new opportunity for from like a well-established publisher and everything like that it's like 
it's a pretty obvious option and as a result i mean a lot of players switched over yeah yeah it's it i don't know it's um i i i feel like a lot of people thought it would be thought it would be big i remember i remember that first trailer i mean everyone references it now but like the, <laughs> the, the, the precise precise gunplay gun yeah <laughs> yeah but i remember that coming out and i was like what like what is this but i don't know <laughs> i do you do you watch any like valorant content creators who's your like who's your favorite like, do you... content creators yeah. uh i mean in terms of like if you're talking about streams alone i watch a lot of streams like pretty much every pro player streams i guess i guess it's not content creators in the end a uh, content creators you know i do watch like ethos flex ninja uh, e i watch e a lot ethos when it comes is my to favorite I, I love alan yeah i met him in person i love the oh, dude really? so much yeah yeah i love the dude um but yeah i watch him uh i watch i watch a lot of streamers in general like probably every content mm -hmm. creator and every pro player i'll probably have been in the stream and just like watch it watch them here and there in my free time when i have it um other than that like youtube i don't really watch that much youtube content creators to be honest i watch darso if that's a content <laughs> creator yeah i watch darso i think that's like the only thing i watch when it comes to youtube uh valorant related youtube mm -hmm. okay i'm gonna probably get one more this uh, last question and then we'll wrap it up um sure you got a buff and nerf and agent what are you who who are you buffing and nerfing? Buff Phoenix nerf chamber. Oh easily. I <laughs> this is something I hate chamber so much. Yeah, I mean I think everyone does. <laughs> I I think even as a chamber player. Yeah, I just I don't know. I don't understand why a nerf the trip. No, I was thinking why a, a Sentinel has an op. I mean, that too. That's my biggest thing about him. I don't. That's so frustrating for me. Okay, actually, one more question. If you had to give me a tip or tips, just something simple to get better at Valorant, I'm I'm plat two <laughs> right now. What would you do? What would you say to me to do to get better at the game? I'm I'm just gonna get, giving you the same response to give everyone uh, who asked my stream. Okay. Uh, in the end, like. It's never, I feel like there's never any easy, quick way for the most part. Unless I specifically go over like each individual person's VOD and like watch them play. Maybe mm -hmm. they have like something that's like outstandingly bad or something. They like, I could easily like fix a lot. But in the end, more than anything, I feel like it's, you just gotta, have, it's all in the mindset and it's all about like grinding it out. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not easy necessarily. Like you look at any of us pro players, I guarantee we have several thousand hours. At least I know I have like an FPS, tacto FPS, I probably have like 15,000 hours. You know, Tyson, same thing, probably around the Shaz, probably even more than that. You know, everyone has like has an absurd amount of hours. It's because it's a huge grind in the end. But to imp so what I recommend is like try to improve as best as you can. Be efficient with your time when you play the game. So like, just have a good mindset, be open minded and be able to like be critical of gameplay, like watch stuff that happens, what works, what doesn't work, why does it work, why doesn't it work. Think about the game mm -hmm. and try to like improve as fast as you can, like improve as fast as you can. That's the best way to make it. You know, as far as you can. Like, yeah, I could tell you like one individual small thing. Maybe you go up one rank. Good for you. But like in the end, I feel like if you want to get out plat three, you just gotta get better. <laughs> it's like the dumb down answer is you just gotta mm -hmm. get better at the game. And yeah. to get better at the game, man, you just gotta put a heck of a time, like a hell of a, a hell of a lot of time into the game. Mm -hmm. And it just takes a lot of time. And the only thing I can give you is just try to improve as fast as you can, which in the end I think is all in the mind, all in the mindset. Mm -hmm. to improve to thrive to improve kind of a thing it's like the biggest thing yeah i really don't play that much but i appreciate it i'll, I'll implement it. and everyone else yeah i'm for sure um yeah. you you are such a awesome person i i appreciate how kind you were and you're easily the fastest like responder and a like checking your dms and stuff that i've ever dealt with so i appreciate that but i also appreciate how how great of a person you were and how kind and just we had a good conversation so i'm, I'm happy yeah no i enjoyed it 100 yeah. percent. uh sorry about missing on the last time yeah it was like the second time you asked me sorry well, oh no you're you're fine yeah, I, yeah, yeah. sorry I about that dealt with way worse than that, so. yeah i know it was my bad i actually completely forgot it wasn't no. i was totally about that all right um yeah you just 
uh keep it up i'm excited to see what you do in the future and um i hope to see some youtube videos out of you soon <laughs> hopefully so <laughs> yeah uh yeah hopefully um yeah that's it for the podcast this has been texture and kim Pecky, and i'll see you guys later peace